Hi everyone, my name is Mai and welcome to my kitchen. So prior to the lockdown, I used to spend a lot of time going out to eat and trying out new restaurants. However, given the fact that it's not really possible at the moment, I've decided to recreate dishes from some of my favorite restaurants and vendors at home. Now, this time last year, I was actually traveling in Japan, so in homage to my visit to Osaka, I've decided to recreate Uncle Rikuro's Jiggly Japanese Cheesecake. Now, I really like this type of cheesecake because the texture is really creamy, but it's also very airy and light and fluffy as well, which makes it really enjoyable. So I'm going to show you guys how I've done it in my easy, simple, home-cooked ways, um, and hope you guys will find it useful. So yeah, hope you enjoy! First off, separate the eggs. Very much like the Japanese fluffy pancakes, we're going to create a yolk mixture and a egg white mixture and combine the two together. You might also want to preheat your oven at this point. Now mix the butter with the first portion of sugar until it becomes soft and creamy. It will be much easier if you leave the butter to cool at room temperature before doing this. Then, add the cream cheese into the mix and continue mixing until it becomes smooth and well incorporated. Gradually add the egg yolks into the mix, one by one. Remember to use a spatula to scrape the sides of your bowl recurrently as you're doing this. Once everything is well combined, start sifting in the flour and the cornstarch. Then, start mixing until there are no more lumps. Pour in the milk, then use the spatula to scrape the side and start mixing again until the batter is smooth and well blended. Moving on to the egg whites, I've added some cream of tartare to help stabilize and hold their shape. You'll want to beat the egg whites until it reaches stiff peaks. We're also going to gradually add some sugar as the egg whites start foaming up. This usually takes about 5 minutes on high speed. You should be able to flip the ball around and if the egg whites hold firm and do not slide, it's ready to go. We're now going to combine the two mixtures together. I sifted the yolk mixture into the egg whites to ensure that there are no more lumps. Fold the two mixtures together until well combined. I used a gentle rotating hand movement going around the bowl then back into the center to not completely deflate the batter. For this video, I've used a 6x3 inch round aluminum tin. To line the tin, we're going to cut a circle of baking paper for the bottom of the tin. And we're going to use some butter to grease the sides. Then, we're going to pour the batter into the tin. Make sure not to overfill your tin, otherwise the surface will crack when you bake it. As a rule of thumb, I left about 2cm of gap between the batter and the edge of the tin. Lightly tap the tin onto the table to burst any air bubbles. I also like to use a spatula to gently remove any clumps and reduce any air bubbles remaining inside. Then, we're going to prepare the water bath for baking. Fill one third of a larger tin with some boiling water and place your cheesecake tin inside. Time for the oven. We're going to do this in three stages. First, bake the cheesecake at 200 degrees for 15 minutes. Then, lower the temperature to 140 for 30 minutes. Then switch off the oven and leave the cheesecake in for another 30 minutes. Once the cheesecake has cooled down, it's now time to plate up. The cake would have shrank a little bit and will be very easy to remove. For decoration, I like to keep it simple with some icing sugar and some sliced strawberries. Now time for the taste test. 
The cake itself has more of a cheesecake rather than sponge cake consistency. It's very creamy and moist, but also very light and airy. And best of all, it jiggles. Now, you guys can check out my Instagram for further proof. I really like this cake because it feels like biting into a cloud and because it's so light, it doesn't make you feel full at all. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you guys found this video useful. Now, if you'd like to see me recreate some more restaurant dishes at home, remember to hit like and also subscribe. And if you'd like to check out some more of my cooking, do visit my blog and also follow me on my Instagram. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.